Hi there. I'm Subha, a career growth coach, and this is season 5 of Small Talk with Raincraft with I'm Hasita. I'm a marketing consultant at Motley Crew and I'm so excited to be at season 5 already. Can you believe it? Please do look us up and catch earlier episodes too. But let's get on with this one. Been a rough week, Hasita? Yeah, it's been an interesting week. Um it's a bit of a family health emergency and uh, I think it's the first time that someone we're close to has gone through something like this and how do you bounce back i mean just to let you know the worst case scenario didn't pan out let's put it that way but um, for a week it felt like it it might as well have it was quite interesting to see you know the same people who you've grown up with who've who brought you up suddenly take on very different roles mm. when when something like this hits yeah I think crisis uh, teaches us a lot of things about ourselves and those around us. Mm-hmm. Right? And um, it surprises us most of the time I Quite think. Quite a bit. Uh, in, just in terms of how I think sometimes people are able to step up mm. and you know deal with stuff. And it's interesting and tell me if <laughs> there is coincidence there or not but like are all bankers just generally better prepared to handle <laughs> the trauma of you know <laughs> yeah we are pretty much uh, waiting Quite for the <laughs> worst to happen most of the time uh, and it does also um but uh, you're right it's uh, we see different sides of ourselves and others uh, who we've been you know working with or living with for years on end and uh, who are who am i in a crisis is a very interesting self awareness yeah. question yeah and it, yeah you're absolutely right because i think this is the first time i've realized that in a crisis i'm actually a really efficient follower mm yeah so let's get into a crisis together because i love to lead in oh, a crisis oh good <laughs> <laughs> or not <laughs> please yeah. i'm done i don't want any <laughs> if i look back at some of the horrendous things that have happened which definitely qualify as a crisis i mean transactions gone wrong client communication gone wrong that monday morning release gone wrong mm-hmm. i'm a little embarrassed to admit it but i do look look at it with a little bit of fondness because <laughs> <laughs> only because it passed let's be yeah. honest <laughs> <laughs> not always with the best of outcomes but i know that i genuinely thrive in such situations it takes some bit of looking back to think about what were those traits mm-hmm. right just to you know put labels on it i think definitely in a crisis uh, you need somebody to emerge as a leader yeah right you need hence followers mm-hmm. because they are they can't be walking alone right so there are managers who step up like you said and become leaders and there are managers who continue to be yeah managers yeah right and i've also seen those who completely crash and burn mm-hmm. yeah i mean in this situation we had one of each <laughs> i can see that now yeah and but the funny thing is there is value to each of those traits yeah. and behaviors yeah because i anyway, i'm i'm just thinking like you know the crash and burn situation well it's not ideal in a crisis maybe these are people who do well in a stable state you know like i mean some of us enjoy dealing with crisis situations to the point where it it may not seem very exciting to not have one every <laughs> other day but then there has to be someone who gets excited about just coming in and turning on the switch every morning as well right so true so true that and that's like really what i experienced with some kind of a, a system wide market wide glitch across the stock market and banks and everything there was something that went down and uh, i witnessed like a colleague who is was so good yeah at his day job so to speak hmm. uh completely just give up on that day mm. and you know uh, some of us took over uh, some of the things that he knew how to do mm-hmm. but just that the uh, the enormity of the situation mm-hmm. he decided this is not what i uh, want to be doing or enjoy doing or what i think i can you know help us get to the yeah. other side of etc but that took that took nothing away from who he was on every other day mm-hmm. and came in with amazing energy enthusiasm ideas execution yeah. all of that so um, yeah i think maybe when when pushed to a corner all behavior is irrational and that's fair mm-hmm. 
there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with you know you're reacting correct, to, correct. yeah no we are all going to respond in in very very different ways whether it's personal or you know something at the workplace um and maybe also not to put too much of um, judgment on it mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. it's a situation that came different people reacted differently yeah and uh, it it you can say yeah it does reveal some bit of who they are and but it's who they are in that situation yeah yeah right. uh, and anyway, i suddenly had this image of uh, when there's this fire in a kids party and george costanza is the first one to push all the kids and run out the door <laughs> <laughs> you know like <laughs> self preservation <laughs> is a powerful instinct <laughs> and i'm just also thinking uh, you've spoken about leadership in a crisis but typically in the day to day running of something you're not hiring for crisis management yeah yeah right or you're not starting something assuming crisis will happen right. so true that's interesting like you you hire somebody for a set of skills and you want them to really uh create those new products and build the teams and run the company and um and when we're talking crisis we're talking something of slightly larger intensity mm-hmm. not the day to day uh you know struggles and challenges but when something large hits the organization or the team or the family unit um you are then now expecting this person to excel in that situation also yeah yeah right so i think the best um the best of organizations and units uh prepare well for these situations which kind of is is where i'm kind of coming from as well because business as usual is a concept in in large organizations mm. uh startups smaller teams where really the focus is on the skill set and doing things faster yes there is a certain amount of grit and resilience uh but i don't know that startups are prepared for crisis of an external variety Mm. right and i don't mean lack of funding that is still very much an internal problem but how many startups have plans for things like okay tomorrow morning i wake up and mm. like the need for that business doesn't exist because when you've hired people with the intent of them doing a job and doing a job well where does that characteristic or that trait really make itself felt and how do you i mean let's say for example you want to find out mm. what do you do mm. yeah maybe that's why the the um more established places have very good testing processes or mm-hmm. you know contingency testing is part of their calendar right like you know that once a quarter you're going to test for so like kind of like having that building fire drill mm-hmm. right uh, which is also very telling right the guys who immediately shut down and walk down the stairs quietly <laughs> versus the lady who tries to say hey it's okay it's not a real fire no I'll, yeah yeah <laughs> i'll finish this call or i'll finish this email like you said in in banking the all of that testing and general high level of preparedness uh, made it a lot easier when some of those things actually panned out which they did mm-hmm. we're not mm-hmm. testing for things which will never happen in our lifetime mm-hmm. right there will be times when networks are down when your building is you know in a zone where there's a flood and you can't reach it or mm-hmm. Uh, when three four employees of a crucial team went on a picnic and they all fell ill and nobody's mm-hmm. there on a monday morning so uh, having all having tested it again and again brought you to a level of pretty strong preparedness at least you didn't panic mm. there was a plan a very detailed hard copy printed <laughs> playbook right yeah. to say hey in these situations this is what you can do um and even during the course of work i think we were always thinking about uh what's the plan b mm-hmm. right today i'm doing it if i don't come in tomorrow who else knows how yeah. to do it right and that kind of thinking um, really really helped when the situations actually arose and you're right in startups it's a lot tougher even for you think about it like if you have two writers and a designer and uh, you and two of the four don't turn up it's a crisis yeah yeah right but these are skill sets which you have somewhere practiced to uh, step in for mm mm-hmm. makes sense yeah uh, which kind of brings me to can you uh, build for becoming a leader in a crisis is that possible or are you because we are talking about something very fundamental here right like it's mm-hmm. not a 
you know, uh, it's it really is that visceral response as we call it, the whole body kind of reaction to situations, right? So true. So maybe either you have that, like you know, I feel like sometimes I'm I would be the one who runs towards the fire. <laughs> in the organizational Why? context, you know, if you're in a leadership role, you are expected to run towards the building or stay put in the building and mm -hmm. uh, and help put out the fire. Uh, it may come naturally to you. Or you have to break it down to, hey, what are the two, three things that are important mm -hmm. that that I may not, it may not be, a, you know, something I enjoy doing or, or even it, or something that I'm comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. But these are the steps. Right. And I've, you know, kind of rehearsed it in the mind or there's a playbook or it's expected of me that I will communicate that one I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. right? Because that is so helpful in a crisis. If... Every because ninety nine percent are followers, managers, and the two three who have also crashed yeah, by yeah. the wayside. But they want to know whom to listen to. Yeah, I think a lot of yes, you're right. Like the freezing response in situations like this comes from not knowing yeah. as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. who's going to tell us what to do, or mm -hmm. am I supposed to decide what to do? Mm -hmm. So if someone says, "Hey, this we follow this person," which doesn't always have to be the leader of the pack. Yeah. Right. So if you are as a as a leader, as a founder, as a team manager, not so comfortable in these situations, part of your preparation could be identifying the person who will take charge. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Right. It doesn't have to be the CEO. It, you could have a crisis manager, mm -hmm. could be their whatever part time job. Yeah. Assuming, you know, they don't need to step into that too often. <laughs> if it's a <laughs> yeah. full time job, you have another problem. But that and then the and hence the next biggest thing is. How are you communicating? Mm. How are you telling people that you've taken charge or that, hey, it's okay, we've got this. We'll. It's not going to be easy, but we'll figure it out. Mm. No, it's of, quite interesting because literally most of the time the word crisis is followed by the word PR, right? Like, uh -huh. I mean, yeah. So I think, um, for example, uh, George Bush got a positive PR spin mm. when he was sitting and reading to kindergarten kids and he was told that 9-11 has just happened mm. and uh, he didn't panic, he didn't jump out of his seat, he finished what he was doing and that was, that has been quoted many times as, you know, very, very powerful and uh, Powerful crisis leadership. Mm -hmm. Like he did the right to thing. To not freak out. Yeah, yeah, to not freak out. But it's interesting, I don't know what layers and dimensions are there to that but when I think Queen Elizabeth II tried to do the same in, in the wake of Princess Diana's passing it was the exact opposite yeah yeah because uh, and the missing piece there was the communication I yeah. think the PR machinery the, lip. Huh? <laughs> the PR machinery didn't put it out that yes she is upset but and Before, she's also yeah. the queen and she's also whatever whatever yeah, yeah. so no very true I think um, it's the communication that is critical um, many times, uh, so I've had instances in my career where uh, things have gone woefully wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody <laughs> downstream in the team, oops, and you know the repercussions are much larger than that oops. And uh, there was a kind of string of stuff which, you know, Murphy's Law, like one Compound, after the other yeah. and whatever. And I ended up writing a lot of these, you know, very apologetic mails to senior management saying, this is what happened, this is the root cause, this is the impact in some cases. And uh, in large organizations, you'll have you know, very, uh, very detailed grid of, you know, who all have to approve. And sometimes it goes up really to the top. And it became something that uh, became like a skill set almost. <laughs> that for the few years after that, I, I would have like senior folks, even sometimes in another department saying, hey, can you help right. us draft that email? Because when you send it, one, people believe you. <laughs> and two, they don't seem to question too much because you cover everything that they would yeah. want to know. That's interesting, right? Because I think p crisis communication is not just about saying everything. Hmm. Right? I think so many times, especially when there are people who are in that freeze response, saying too much is a much bigger problem, right? And yeah. it causes its own sub-fires in correct. different places. Yeah. yeah, Especially in family um, situations, right? Who all do you tell? Mm -hmm. How much do you tell? Because mm -hmm. 
suddenly everyone's panicked and everyone's got a flight and come over yeah. and now you have to tend to them more than the crisis yeah. itself yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> i mean crisis leadership is really about that i think it's about one clarifying who's in charge uh, communicating in a very consistent and uh, concise and comprehensive manner and also you know one of the things that i always used to get positive feedback about from my team was that if we came and told you that we did something wrong your first reaction was to fix that hmm right as opposed to saying how could you do this why did you do this yeah. and you know blaming the individual or even questioning um and that gave us a lot of confidence to come to you because the focus was on solving the problem right right because finally that's what the, you want right? despite yeah, yeah. who did what yeah. uh, the problem needs to be solved and and in in our kind of job there was always a timeline like a deadline to it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you had to do it within the next 2 hours or next 3 hours or the repercussions or the implications were even larger so you know focusing on the problem rather than the people mm-hmm. but afterwards doing as a group a very very detailed post mortem hmm right? you know what's interesting to me is that you talk about this as though a crisis should be expected is that just the banker in you yeah i think uh, because whether you expect it or not it's coming <laughs> 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 and and my thought process is always been like if you're running like an operations shop or you're running a team or you're running a set of processes uh there are humans sitting there Hmm. Hmm. So what are the chances that you get it right each and every time? Things are going to go wrong. Hmm. Right? So um still can't accept it but <laughs> cognitively makes sense. Hmm. And intuitively that's what we tell we we maybe we don't say it enough in the workplace and we actually used to keep reiterating that please escalate. Right? I had a super boss who used to keep saying please make it my problem. Mm. like i don't want to be surprised by something yeah. so tell me if you if something has gone wrong right and then we all collectively figure out what to do uh, and that's intuitively what you want at home right like you're telling your kids like tell me like don't yeah. try to over manage it don't try to fix it yourself mm-hmm. uh, because and something catch me off guard <laughs> yeah 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 so i think these are few of the things when i mean sometimes you have it in you uh, but be okay with the fact that there are different roles people play and you know we it's a good thing that we all don't want to be the leader in a crisis yeah seriously it's a really good thing that's S- one yeah. situation where you're happy that uh, a ton of people just want to follow they just want instructions uh, they give you that immediate anchor yeah definitely like, these yeah. are the steps yeah. to be followed right mm-hmm. and so even i don't have to I think many times it's like a, it's a brain freeze mm. for a lot of people and the playbook helps you tide through that like I don't have to think I just have to read and do kind of Fair instructions enough, yeah. are there I mean we've seen like with all the binging we've done of something like a gray's anatomy the minute that how uh, many crises no like that place runs on crises almost the, I think the the minute that you know somebody rolls Patient in on the journey or whatever like you know that there's a protocol and yeah uh, after a period of time we only know what to say <laughs> yeah yeah no in fact i was thinking about all the meta crisis in that show where huh. every 10 episodes someone's dying yeah. yeah yeah quite prepared no so i think um, maybe that as leaders or even as just people in a team in a family in any unit and we're all part of so many such things uh know who you are and be okay with it yeah like don't don't get in the way of people who yeah, are trying to move yeah. things forward yeah yeah so if you're a good follower a good executor then then play that role well and mm. uh, look to see who's the leader and how can i best support it if you're the leader keep trying to see what you can do better each time but you know do what you do well fair enough and if you crash and burn by the side it's okay that's how you are in that occasional crisis that comes along yeah the rest of the time you're doing yeah. you know pretty good so Yeah. Don't beat, Don't yourself. beat yourself up. Don't spread rumors. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. yeah. Don't bring down those who did a good job finally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. Interesting. I hope to never see a crisis again for the rest of my life if I could. I know you hope the opposite. <laughs> so you know who to call if something is going wrong. 
there is somebody here who will step in with great joy <laughs> and please do i think somehow the banking folks just seem to be really good at it somehow mm. <laughs> i sound like a psychopath <laughs> You sounded that way from the time we were listening to True Crime podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't give it away. <laughs> so true. So that's all, folks. Catch you next time. Thanks for listening. Please do remember to share, subscribe, follow, and do leave us a nice rating or review. It really helps us move up the charts and reach more and more small talkers. Bye.